Space Camp was a really, really, really good experience for me. Um, as I've wanted to be an astronomer or some kind of scientist since about the age of five. Um, so I remember when I was five, um, I think it was Voyager 2 and Voyager 1 was sort of pruning through the solar system. They both taken beautiful, beautiful pictures of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. Um, so the four big gas giants in our solar system. And I remember looking at those pictures on the TV and just going, wow, uh, I need to know more about this. Um, and so from that point on, um, I pretty much forced mum and dad to buy me every single astronomy book that I saw in the bookshop. <laughs> um, every camping trip we went on, um, I'd make them make detours to the nearest observatory so I could go there and talk to the people. And uh, it was just something that always really, really excited me. Um, as well as astronomy, obviously, uh, I was also pretty excited by um, the US space program. And that's mostly because it's just such a massive achievement. And it's, it's something that I think everyone can feel a little bit excited about. Because it's just a brilliant example of people working together, people achieving absolutely phenomenal things together. Um, and yeah, that always really inspired me as well. So when I first heard about Space Camp, naturally I was just kind of like, wow, I have, to, I have to go to this thing, I have to be part of this. Um, so in 1999, that was the first year that I went, um, obviously had such a good time that I decided to go back again in 2000, so that was during my year 11, so I had to be pretty organised, um, made sure that I had all my assignments handed in, that I was ready for my exams, and then, yeah, I nicked off to the US for, for three weeks and um, did some fun stuff, uh, but the most fun thing, obviously, was the week I spent at, at Space Camp. But yeah, a big emphasis of Space Camp um, is teamwork and support structures. So working with the other people around you to achieve things that you would possibly have a little bit of difficulty achieving by yourself. Um, so the biggest part of Space Camp, sort of the, the combination of everything we did at Space Camp, was a 12-hour mission where we spent half of our time either in a simulated shuttle mission um, in the sort of command centre where we talked to the folks who were in the shuttle or in a space station where we did little experiments. So both years I was there, I was assigned the role of uh, Capcom and pilot. So Capcom was the person in the command centre who communicated with the, the pilot in the shuttle. Um, and the pilot in the shuttle was the guy who flicked all the switches and made sure that the, the shuttle didn't explode at any point in time. Um, so that was pretty fun. Um, but the point is, I mean, because different people from different groups who were in these three different simulators at the same time. We had to work together to make sure that nothing went wrong. So our supervisor at some point would stand up and start waving their arms around and go, oh, there's a fire in some part of the shuttle. You guys need to flip through your books and tell the shuttle what's going on and try and tell them what switches they need to switch to save them. And so we'd have to work together with them. So that was just an absolutely fantastic experience. And, uh, I mean, it got a little bit serious at times, but mostly it was just really, really fun because everyone was bouncing ideas off everyone else. We were problem solving, we were helping each other achieve something really, really awesome. Um, and so that was really, that was the key thing in Space Camp. The other thing that was really cool as well is we were kind of, I mean, obviously we were supervised, but to some extent we were also left to look after each other. So some of you said that you'd maybe thought about going to Space Camp, but you hadn't, hadn't quite decided. Um, do, do any of you have any questions, I guess, about, about Space Camp, what it involves? Can I say anything that might convince you to go? Because I, I really think it's something that everybody should try and do if they can. What was your highlight of Space Camp? Of Space Camp? Um, I got to meet an astronaut. <laughs> <laughs> and it was actually completely by accident. Because um, Space Camp happens at the, it's at the US Space and Rocket Center in Huntsville, Alabama. So it's completely disconnected from, uh, from Cape Canaveral, from everything that's going on down in Florida or from the, the Jet Propulsion Labs in California. Um, it's actually where the rocket program was born. So after World War II, when America acquired um, some rocket scientists from Germany, that's where they took them, and that's where they set them up so that they could start building rockets for the US space program. Um, so during the course of Space Camp, they'll, they'll take you out to some old factories where they used to put the rockets together. They'll take you out to the test sites where they used to fire off these things. And you'll see where some of them exploded. <laughs> um, so just an amazing setup. Um, and so the, the actual facility it happens at, it's just huge. It's this amazing place. There's 
um, sort of full-size rockets, full-size space shuttles, uh, an amazing museum with lots of, uh, lots of interesting things to look at. They've got an IMAX theatre. Um, they've obviously got all the simulators set up as well. And these are, these are decked out exactly the same as the inside of a proper sort of command center, uh, the same as a, a shuttle. Um, but I actually, I met the astronaut um, completely by accident. We arrived a little bit early um, the day before space camp started. We wandered up to the cafeteria and there was this slightly bald guy sitting at the table. And we sat down at the table next to him and he looked over and goes, oh, you guys must be here for the space camp. I'm an astronaut. And he pulled out this chief of photos. He's like, do you want me to sign a photo for you? Like, yes. yes please. <laughs> so that was absolutely fantastic. Um, so meeting an astronaut, obviously the simulators were fantastic. I met a lot of really, really great people and I'm still in contact with today as well. So friends I made there are still my friends now. So people that I'll, I'll never stop talking to. Um, also the diving. The diving was very cool. So they have a full tank set up. Um, where you, you strap on diving gear and they have uh, a mock-up of a um, satellite down there. And so it's meant to simulate what it would be like actually being in space, being weightless. So you go down there, you pull bits off the satellite, you move them to other bits, you attach them. But um, I'd never been diving before, so that was just a really, really cool experience as well. And so I guess, yeah, the biggest thing that I got out of space camp was I realised that having a really good support structure and being able to work in a team um, is actually really important. Um, in fact, it's almost essential. Um, and I'm finding that now in the work that I'm doing. Um, so I'm doing a, a PhD at Monash. Um, I'm in an office with two other guys. Both of them are working on galaxies, like me. So I, my work involves looking at how galaxies evolve over the course of the universe. So how one galaxy turns into a different kind of galaxy um, what kind of conditions they need to do that, so things like that. Um, and if you want to ask me about that later on, you're more than welcome to. The, the other guys in my office work on slightly different things, but I guess the point is that we all have a little bit of crossover. So if one of us has a problem, we just go, hey Dave, can you, uh, I don't quite understand what's going on here, can you help me? And my other office mates are always willing to sort of wheel a chair over, sit down at the computer with me and, and help me out. I mean. There were people there from all different kinds of ethnic backgrounds, different social backgrounds, uh, with different interests, and it was just amazing seeing everyone just get together. Um, no one was in, like, everyone found a way of doing every single activity that was there. So there was, there was a, an obstacle course that we had to work through, so that had things that needed to be climbed over, it had boards that needed to be balanced across. And even for the people with no sight, that was, that was doable. I mean, because there were people there with slightly more vision who were able to, to tell them what was going on to help them. Um, but in other, other cases, um, the people with no vision were able to help the people with vision. Um, like, my sense of touch isn't anywhere near as good as it should be. And there was something where we had to, I think, identify something just by, like something quite minute, quite, quite small. And I, I, I really didn't do very well at that, but someone was able to help me with that. And that was fantastic as well. Because, I mean, as you say, that, uh, when it comes to support structures, part of it is, I mean, there's always a workaround. You can always achieve something in some way, shape, or form. And it's just to do with uh, the people you have around you and the technology that you have at your disposal. So there's always a technological solution, but that needs to go hand in hand with the people around you being accommodating and helpful and understanding. But also, there's just a lot of guts and determination on your part as well. I, I use a monocular as well. Um, so uh, the monocular I find is probably one of the most useful tools I've ever had. Um, I use it to cross the road. I use it to identify coffee dates from a distance. Um, <laughs> uh, that can be a little creepy sometimes. <laughs> um, I use it to pick the, uh, the cheapest can of tuna off the supermarket shelf. I, yeah, so it's, I, I carry it with me all the time. When I don't have it, I feel lost. So, yeah. um, I also use it long cane to get around as well. Um, do you have your monocular on your neck? I do, yes. Um, and for those who can't see it, it looks like it's covered with sticky tape. It is, yeah, the end's falling off. Um, this is this is probably getting towards the end of its lifespan. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Which generation of monocular is that? How I think it's in your life? about four. I think this is the fifth. Um, so I've been using it since I was seven, I think. Oh. So, yeah, I, I'm a long-time monocular user. You should get an and it's wonderful to see if you don't find me. <laughs> it's low tech, it's easy. Yep. 
I mean, it's 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 essential for me. I mean, without it, I just I wouldn't be able to function anywhere as well as I. Like you should try getting the, one of the new ones. They're pretty good. Okay. <laughs> well, I think once this one dies, I'll definitely upgrade. But um, the lenses are fine. It may look shabby on the outside, but the inside of it's just fine. So I'll, I'll keep it for a little bit longer. It's certainly here. What sort of I guess academic and Um, uh, mostly just the ability to try anything that's thrown at you, to not give up. Um, in terms of academic skills, probably, I mean, it's really available to, to anybody. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, people there from all different walks of life, all kinds of interests. I mean, I was one of the few people there who actually really wanted to do something space-based as a career in the long run. Um, a lot of people were just there because they knew it was going to be a really, really wonderful experience. But um, I was actually leading people with less sight than me around space camp. So that was the first time I'd ever been given the chance to give anyone else sighted guide. And that was a really good experience for me as well. So making sure that other people got to where they were supposed to be on time. So again, everyone was working together. Everyone was helping each other. Um, that was a really great experience. Um, so yeah, the two years at space camp were just phenomenal. 